All right. Move on to item number two, which is the uh, Yuba, Yuba Sutter Food Bank presentation. This is going to be presented by Michelle Downing, the Chief Executive Officer of the Yuba Sutter Food Bank. Welcome. Good evening, Mayor, uh, Mayor and uh, Council members. My name is Michelle Downing. I'm the CEO for the Yuba Sutter Food Bank. Thank you for this opportunity uh, to present a snapshot of what the 17 months has looked like at, at the food bank. I joined the organization in April of last year in the midst of the, a leadership change and the un unexpected wrath of COVID-19. Yeah, probably not the best time to join the food bank or lead one at that. But based on the results, the food bank team performed remarkably well considering the challenges. I report to 12 of the most dedicated, committed, and supportive men and women who volunteer their time and expertise. They are passionate about fighting the food insecurity in our community and are instrumental in the success of the food bank leading that fight. Together, we navigate the transition from a volunteer-ran organization to a staff-ran organization. The food bank now has six full-time and three part-time employees. We have built community partnerships, developed and implemented processes for reaching more people in need, and decreased food waste within the food bank. Okay. The food bank is a food storage and distribution depot for over 35 partnered agencies who are smaller agents, frontline agencies that get the food out directly to the community or the people in need. We receive and safely store donated foods and grocery products from manufacturers, retailers, shippers, packers, growers, uh, government agencies. We, de we, then distribute, um, we then distribute the food and grocery items through our partnered agencies and through meal programs that serve uh, children, seniors, individuals um, at risk for, for hunger. Last year, the food bank distributed over 2.3 million pounds of food to uh, Yuba Sutter community. This was the most amount of food that the food bank has ever distributed to our community. Last year, our community was in crisis, and like so many others, the food bank responded to COVID-19. The pandemic changed every aspect of our work. It presented new challenges nearly every day with the increased need of food assistance and how to help vulnerable and even quarantined households. We set up drive-through distributions, which became a vital part of our response efforts for the safety and efficiency of our staff, volunteers, and the recipients. We improved and implemented new programs to reach and help more people in need by adding nine additional food distribution locations in addition to several pop-up food giveaways. We developed a food delivery program for, vulnerable, for the vulnerable population, and we increased and strengthened relationships with our partnered agencies by collaborating and assisting them in their efforts. The unyielding support from Rotary, Kiwanis, Adventist Rideout, LDS missionaries, Beale Air Force Base, can um, sum up and from so many others, can sum up the measurement of our impact. Those who gave of their time, talents, and treasures supported our efforts in facilitating the most amount of food we have ever delivered to our community, which resulted in over 140,000 visits to all of our food giveaways. This is about a 45% increase from 2019. The food bank assisted the Office of Emergency Services both, um, count, for both counties and the COVID-19 task force by providing food to the population um, that was most vulnerable to COVID. As the stay-at-home order was lifted and the community began to reopen, OES and the task force began preparations to de de deactivate their call centers. We worked with both organizations and establishments and, and established an internal process for people, sorry, I'm just like, woo, process for people to call into the food bank directly for their assistance. 
Since then, we developed the Homebound program um, into what it is today. Because of our partnership with Yuba and Sutter County, we deliver two home-cooked meals and a box of groceries to low-income seniors. We coordinate with local restaurants and catering services to prepare the meals using the food from our food rescue program. The program nourishes low-income seniors and meals are provided to low-income in-home uh, service clients, adult protective service clients, homeless seniors transitioning from the street to motels, and hospital patients that are being discharged. The money received for this program is kept local. It has provided an opportunity for restaurants to recoup some of the financial loss incurred by COVID. When it comes to healthy food, we believe it should be eaten and not wasted. Food waste stems from confusion over date labeling, resulting in a lot of food being thrown away, which is still safe for consumption beyond the label date. Through information provided by Feeding America, USDA, and FDA, we know that the food past its best, best use date is still wholesome and nutritious and safe to eat. These dates are simply a manufacturer's best guess on the item's freshness, which is oftentimes very conservative. Through our partnership with Feeding America, we secured donations, oops, next slide please. We secured donations from over 10 local major grocery store retailers in Yuba and Sutter County, who donate their excess perishables and non-perishable items to families in need. When stores have slightly damaged products, or food nearing the expiration, they pull it from their shelves and instead of disposing of it, they donate it to us. We pick up Monday through Friday, collecting on an average of 80,000 pounds of food a month, which is then distributed to our community through our, our monthly community well-being um, food distributions, our partnered agencies who support access to Yuba and Sutter County, the restaurants who prepare the meals for our homebound delivery program, 14 Forward, Better Way, the homeless resource officers who have expressed that having items in their patrol cars to offer the homeless people or person makes um, having those conversation, conversations easier. As the largest food recovery organization in Yuba and Sutter County, our food rescue program reduces food waste and provides more meals to our community. Meals are just part of the story. The food redirected to neighbors' tables through the program has a positive environmental impact because we are getting food out faster to the community and through our partnered agencies who support food access, we have seen a decrease internally in food waste by 50% compared to 2019. But we can only, or we can always do better. Improving and expanding our recovery efforts will require new resources, like investing in solar to decrease the cost of electricity, adding additional cold storage for storing donations, adding more trucks to our fleet so we can do more large-scale food recovery building the capacity of our community partners so they're able to distribute more food and adding more volunteers labor to help us sort and distribute the food. I believe the need within our community is not going away anytime soon. Hungry adults, children and seniors rely on the food bank for their next meal and for healthier food choices. We hear their stories about having by not having enough food to feed their children, not being able to provide healthier food options, and disabled seniors having to choose to buy medication over food. There is still much work to be done, and we can only do it through the continued support of grants and donations. I hope you guys have a better understanding, and gals, I hope you have a better understanding of the, um, the work that we do and the vital part and the role that we have within the community. And um, I wanna personally invite each of you to come out and get a personal tour of the food bank. I think it speaks volumes when you actually see, and I think 
Dave can um, attest to that, is when you actually see the operation and what we do, it's pretty amazing. Thank you. All right, oh, thank question, you. Sorry, questions? <laughs> Hold on. I always I'm forget that part. <laughs> we'll, we'll get you. Hold on. Uh, Council, any comments or questions for Michelle? For the mayor. Please. Michelle, first of all, thank you for the incredible job you guys are doing. And we partnered with you right after you came on board. And absolutely did. Thank you. You guys have done a remarkable job during COVID. Um, the question I have is like with a normal year, do you see a spike as far as need coming up with the holidays that the community needs to get behind you? Because the holidays are a time that we hear a lot of things with people with mental um, crisis because of the holidays and triggering memories, but we also know there's many that need food. Are you seeing that you need an increase as we go through the holidays, or is it still on that same curve that you've been? Can you tell us what your upcoming needs are over the next three months? Well, we're always in need for shelf-stable items, um, especially during the holidays. Um, so uh, a lot of our partnered agencies, they do um, provide gift baskets and things to those that are in need. And so being able to stock our shelves to help our partnered agencies meet that need, it, it's, it's always, it's, it's an always a need. And by specifics, do you, the shelf things, do you, examples of what the specifics you need if, if people want to donate items versus money? Sure. Well, money is al always the best option um, because we can get more food for the dollar um, versus, you know, someone just coming in and, and, and bringing in five cans of, um, you know, peanut butter or whatnot. I, I'm not, we'd still love that. Um, but putting the money to best use is buying in bulk and, and, um, and pallets of items that we can get through our partnered agencies, like bigger uh, food banks, like Contra Costa, Feeding America, um, rather than just going to the retail stores. And uh, the last question, because mine's all centered around the upcoming holidays. Sure. Um, to have that impact that you need to take care of our community, what's a realistic time frame of when you would need contributions to the food bank uh, so that you can have the inventory to disperse it out to the... You can start now, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but you need them by Thanksgiving, you need them by November um, 1. Actually, it, it's probably around, in all seriousness, you know, September, October to pre start preparing and, you know, for November and December. All right, thank you. Yeah. For the mayor? Yes. Thank you for that presentation. Um, I, I got a uh, firsthand... Uh, example of how great your, your uh, organization is. About six months ago, there was a semi that ended up in a ditch over there on Riego Road, and, and Virgil from uh, Just Serve put the call out, and uh, it was towed over here to the yard on Garden Highway, and it was, it, was, it was fascinating to watch all the assets that you had show up, and the small army of people that were there um, and saved all. And it was quite a bit. It was, it was, it was Quite a bit of meeting there, and, and it was and it went to a good cause. So thank you very much. Yes, I was back in that food in that truck with you, shucking oh. boxes. <laughs> I thought you looked familiar. <laughs> yeah. So what he speaks of is um, we often, not often, but we sometimes get um, big semis that were in an accident, and so the insurance company prefers the items to be donated. And we were a recipient of a large load that was coming from or going to uh, Costco um, and Safeway and Trader Joe's. So we got um, a lot of nice items that we wouldn't have normally had um, to be able to offer to the community. Thank you for that presentation, and um, I will have to set up a date with you. Yes. To to get together. Um, what are what are the like the top ask of community of food? You know, um, that you're always like, oh, the, do we give out? You know, um, corn, peanut butter. What is it that you're top? Get, you know, need for um, food our pa our pantries seem to um, like the pa uh, the peanut butter, um, you know, pop top type things, um, your soups that have pop top, um, easier to those that are um, on the streets that they help. Um, um, tuna, um, all the vegetables, um, 
pretty much a lot of non-perishable items. Um, there are a few pantries that have um, refrigeration in their pantries that they can hold, you know, some of the colder uh, fresh produce items. But a lot of them are pretty much non-perishable items. It's really interesting, the, the food delivery system that you set up with restaurants and getting food to people. Can you explain a little how, not too much into the details of it, but how did, because you know, people were suggesting that, you know, in the height of all the concerns, right? And yeah. all of a sudden it's like, oh, the food bank's doing this, you know, because people were asking, where do I get this? And wouldn't it be a great partnership to help restaurants when they were closed, yeah. you know, to continue to hopefully, you know, survive during that time? Do you want to share a little bit how that how it started? Yeah. Um, well, it started with uh, with COVID and and yeah. being able to meet people that uh, ba basically the vulnerable population, those um, that we were asking to stay in versus go out, and um, they were just we were just delivering like bags of um, groceries, grocery items, um, and then um, we kind of elevated it and um, through grant funding. Um, partnering with local restaurants and they come into the food bank um, or send us an ingredient list and we pull the items for them. So the restaurants are shopping and, and they're preparing the food um, that we recover. And um, they package it up in a, um, in a container where the recipient can either refrigerate it, freeze it, and then microwave it. That's awesome. And how often are you doing that? Uh, Yuba County, it's twice, um, or it's every Tuesday. Okay. And uh, Sutter County, it is uh, two times a month, the first and the third Thursday of the month. Very well done. I mean, I can't even say what a need and the aspect of you starting in the middle of that, you know, eye of the storm of COVID. It's just a testament to, to your leadership, to your ability to pull all this together and, and with your board members I, I i think there's someone maybe in the room that is one but um just you know but you have a fantastic board as well to help you navigate with all this so thank you so much thank you mm -hmm. and michelle we do eat 600 turkeys remember for so oh, you can oh yeah just, just want to throw that out sorry <laughs> there you go got one <laughs> <laughs> 599 <laughs> Anything? Okay. Michelle, thank you so much. Yeah. Um, I think just watching what's happened over the last 17 months or so and the, and the changes and the positive things that have happened and the leveraging uh, and the plussing of, of all the relationships. I know there's a, a lot of folks trying to do a lot of things, but it comes top of mind. I think it was, the food bank is definitely uh, you know, standing alone out there knowing that this is a stable uh, solid organization led with solid people like yourself and your board and they're contributing to the community so thank you for the presentation I like the councilwoman are probably going to need to step up and uh, take a visit down there absolutely um, it's a wonderful community resource yeah it really is I, I, I truly and believe I, that not because I'm leading it it's just it is an absolute <laughs> wonderful community resource it's okay to pat yourself on the back <laughs> all right thank you so much right. for being here thank this evening guys.